Hello, and welcome to another Interbotics tutorial. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Locobot control package. This package is responsible for containing all of the configuration and launch files necessary to start working with your Locobot. It can launch things like the base, the arm, the camera, and optionally, the LiDAR. To start, take a look at its source here on GitHub. And we'll get the configuration directory first. But there is the config, the demos, and the launch directories. So inside of the config directory, we have a couple of different important configuration files, all in a YAML format. We have the parameters for the Kabuki node, the parameters for the RealSense camera, the parameters for the TF rebroadcaster. And finally, the parameters for the XS SDK. We have two kinds of configuration files. We have the modes launch files and the motor configuration launch files, or I'm sorry, configuration files. To start, we'll take a look at one of the motor configuration files. So in each of these configuration files, a lot of different things happen. Um, you can take a look at the X series arm ROS2 control package video for more details about that. Uh, but the highlights are that we define the different joints in the robot. We define their sleep positions. We configure the joint state publisher different groups. In this case, we have the arm, which is all the joints within the arm, and the camera, which are all the joints in the pan and tilt mechanism. We also configure shadows, tell it to calibrate the shoulder shadow based on the shoulder joint. We say that the pan joint has a sister tilt, and then we set the EEPROM registers of the different joints, specifying the ID of the servo that they belong to. So depending on the robot model that you specify in your launch command, it will load either the base, Locobot PX100, WX200, or WX250 six degree. And then next we have the two different mode configuration files. So if you choose Locobot base, it will see this base and load this one. If you choose any other kind, it will launch this modes all. So once again, you can take a look at that, the arm control uh, package video uh, for in-depth details. But here you can see that in the base, we are just configuring the camera group. But in this modes all configuration file, we are configuring the arm, and the camera, and then this, the gripper servo as a single. Then in the demos directory, we have the Python ROS2 API demos, but these specific Python ROS2 API demos are for just the control package. Finally, in the launch directory, we have a single launch file, exoslocobotcontrol.launch.py, and this is responsible for launching series of different nodes and configurations and other launch files. So in this case, we have the Exos Locobot description launch include. Uh, you can watch the descriptions Locobot package ROS2 video for more details about that. But just know that we're passing down uh, several different configuration options and launch configurations. We have our Exos SDK node, which launches the uh, Dynamixel driver responsible for controlling the arm and the pan and tilt mechanism. We also have the Exos SDK sim node, which is launched if we set the use sim launch configuration to true. And then this is only launched if that argument is set to false, which it is by default. We also have the uh, Kabuki node, which is launched if the 
use base launch argument is set to true, and the base type launch argument is set to Kabuki. The RP LiDAR node, which is responsible for controlling the LiDAR, is launched if the use LiDAR launch argument is set to true. The RS camera node, responsible for controlling the RealSense camera, is launched if the use camera launch argument is set to true. The TF rebroadcaster node, or launch include, which is responsible for taking the, uh, the transforms published by the Locobot mobile base, taking them from the Locobot mobile base namespace and putting them into the root transform namespace. This is launched if use base ODOM is set to true, or use base ODOM TF, if use base is set to true, and if the base type is set to create three. And then all of those are included. And then here we will review the launch structure. So you can see that the exoslocobot control.launch.py, like we saw in the launch file, it has the descriptions launch include. It launches the XS SDK, whether that be the real one or the simulated one, the series of Kabuki nodes, the RP LiDAR node, the RealSense 2 camera node, and the TF rebroadcaster. You can see that the create three nodes are not launched directly. They will always be active as long as your create three base is turned on. You have a few more details about each specific node or series of nodes here uh, that you can read for more details. Okay, so now we'll talk about the usage of this package. So here you can see all the different uh, launch arguments that are available in the exoslocobot control.launch.py launch file. Some of the important and relevant ones are robot model, where when you specify this, this will load the correct configurations and also pass this down to the descriptions package so it launches the right DRDF and selects the right mesh files. You have robot name, where if you have multiple robots, you can separate them uh, with the different Locobot uh, control launch files. So by default, it's set to Locobot, but maybe if you have three, you could set them as Locobot one, two, and three. Uh, use base, which if true, will load the relevant nodes for the Kabuki or the create three. Use base ODOM TF. So if this is set to true, along with the other ones that we talked about in the launch file, here we'll load the TF rebroadcaster. So along with the use base and if your base type is set to create three. Uh, your base type, which is set by an environment variable in your uh, .bash RC file, your interbotics exoslocobot base type. Your options are Kabuki or create three. So that will again load the correct base model in your URDF and load the correct set of nodes uh, based on whichever one you set. Use LiDAR, you can set this to true to launch the RP LiDAR nodes. Use camera, set that to true to launch the camera nodes. You also have a couple of configuration options for the RealSense camera, such as point cloud enable, you can set the logging level, the logging output location, and whether or not, whether or not you want to uh, reset the camera when the node starts. We also have the motor configuration uh, launch argument, which will load the one of those motor configurations that we talked about here. So base, PX100, WX200, or WX250S. Mode type will load either the modes all or modes base, depending on the robot model that you selected. You also have this load configs launch argument. So if this is set to true, which it is by default, we'll write all, or write all of the default configurations here to the EEPROM. Um, this does not need to happen every single time. 
it only needs to happen a single time because all of these EEPROM registers will be set permanently, or not permanently, will just be set in memory and loaded once the servos are started again. So setting this to false will, you know, increase the length of time of, or will increase the life of your EEPROM registers, as well as shorten up the launch time of the Exus SDK. You also have this use sim argument, which will launch the simulated Dynamixel driver. And then the rest of your robot description launch configurations down here. All right, and now let's actually launch this package. So we're gonna navigate to our Innovatics workspace, source the setup file, and then use this launch command. So ROS2 launch turbotics access locobot control. So it's locobot control.launch.py. Set our robot model to locobot WX250S. Use base. Use LIDAR. And use camera. So launching that, everything gets started. We have the RealSense 2 camera node, the robot state publisher, joint state publisher, XS SDK, RP LiDAR, and the uh, TF rebroadcaster. So you can see that it found all of the servos using the XS SDK, TF rebroadcaster, is broadcasting from the right namespace to the right namespace. Camera is properly loaded, LiDAR is properly loaded, and we're ready to go. So we will use the remote view launch file from the descriptions package to see what it looks like. All right, and this is our, our virtual representation of our real robot visualized in Arviz. Take a look at what our camera sees. That's you, that's the camera, kind of hard to see because all the lights are off. You can visualize our point cloud from the depth camera because we have our point cloud enabled. You can also visualize our laser scan. So these are the all of these dots are different readings from the LiDAR. It's just the border of this room. And that's my head. Zoom in close to see that. Let's turn that all off. And then we'll take a close look at the Exus SDK so, and what that has to offer us. So here we're calling the torque enable service offered by the X-Series SDK. It is of type Interbotics XS messages serve torque enable. We are using the command type group and we are selecting the arm group as configured in the motor configuration file for this locobot model, and we are setting enable to false. So what this will do is set the torque, or detorque all of the motors in the arm, and we're just gonna do that to visualize what the arm looks like as it moves around, just so you can see how the joint states are propagated from the excess SDK over all the way through the joint state publisher and robot state publisher to Arviz. For more details about the Interbotics X Series SDK, you can check out the ARM Control ROS2 package overview um, video that we did a little bit ago. 
Uh, there we go over the different topics and services offered by the XS SDK and also review the simulated Dynamixel driver. So one other thing we can view is the odometry. Just have to be careful that I don't unplug any of the cables here. <laughs> Um, but you can see the odometry frame down here, Locobot Odom. And as we drive around, uh, the Create 3 is publishing its transform from the odom to the base link and the base footprint. Just calculating that odometry and publishing it as a transform. The Create 3 also offers several services, actions, and uh, topics that it publishes to. You can read the uh, Create 3 documentation on iRobot Education's website for more details about those. So that's it for this tutorial. By the end of it, you should know how the Locobot control package uh, configures and launches all of the different nodes required to run the Locobot, such as the XS SDK the RealSense camera, the LiDAR, and the mobile base. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.